Well, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in this world, and welcome to the last live show of season 25 for Beyond the Ordinary Show. And we are blessed to have one of my favorite people in the world here, Debbie Johnson, who's going to go into her brilliance like she always does and enrich us with so much information and wisdom and, and really um, an intelligence that flows through her on what's happening in different realms and how she perceives them and then how information comes through through her for you, for me, um, in the hopes that we can all receive and acclimate and expand and grow into the love that's accessible to all of us. So if you're familiar with Debbie Johnson, it's you already know you're in for a treat. And if you're not, Debbie, as I welcome you to the show, I'd love it if you would um, Describe to everyone um, listening what exactly, well, I don't know by exactly, but if you can describe how you work with your private clients and, and those who reach out to you. Oh, thanks, John. I'm so, I love being on this show. I love, I love interacting with you. It's so high vibration. Yeah. And that's the realm I like to be in. That's the people I like to be around me. And that's one of the things I ask the angels all the time. Keep me in the highest vibration. Keep my thoughts in the highest vibration. The people around me in the highest vibration. My work in the highest vibration. So that's the intention I have all the time when I'm doing this work. But I love angels. Um, I have been blown away ever since I realized how they work up until today. I mean, every day I'm blown away by what angels are capable of, what they do and how loved ones communicate. Mm. But my, my favorite thing is going into someone's energy field. And that's and during a session, I'll go into their energy field and I can only pick up who is, present in, within eight feet of them mm -hmm. so if I start hearing someone talk or feeling someone come towards them that means the person is in the room with them they're not hanging out with me they're in the room with the person I'm talking to I'm just tapping into their magnetic field mm -hmm. and then I'll start feeling the other ones that go into the magnetic field so a lot of it's feeling and then hearing and I'll start to hear angels talk and loved ones talk about that person or even describe the room they're in. So a lot of the calls are not on Zoom. They're on Zoom if you'd like, but if it's just audio, it's almost like I see the movie without seeing the movie mm -hmm. because the loved ones describe it all. Every time you describe the work that you do and how you do it, I learn something new. I learn the way that you tap in. I learned about this eight foot radio <laughs> and how they're showing up with us, not with you. Um, yeah. And all that makes so much sense. Um, yeah. And again, it's just so much fun watching you read and share information. And we're going to get into live Q&A. So if you guys want to ask your personal questions, we're going to open to that in a little bit. So you can raise your hand and we'll start getting you guys in the queue. Um, as we do that, and you are put on as a panelist, get familiar with the screen and find where your microphone is so that we don't have to try to fumble around with trying to find microphones as you get called on. Um, so again, we'll prepare for that. And also we'll go through the special offer in a little bit, but it, Debbie's always so generous and offers a discount on her private sessions. Um, and I saw where your prices had just gone up on your personal site. I received that email. Um, and see what you're offering as a special on BTO. So it's a very generous, mm -hmm. uh, not only session, but other things that Debbie always, from her heart, adds for you to receive and to get to know her more and to, to be able to access also intelligence that is, is waiting for you that perhaps we're not sure how we're equipped to hear it. And to have Debbie as the ambassador for that information for us, it's you're in great hands. And again, we'll get into the private offer and to the special offer a little bit later. Um, Debbie, when, before we started, you said that you were really having this um, 
this calling to talk about the the tides of how our loved mm-hmm. ones come in and out to give us messages and that you're having a lot of people having similar experiences and and feeling that perhaps a loved one's close by but then all of a sudden they're gone yeah. and they can't feel it anymore uh tell us more about what maybe your clients have been experiencing maybe give an example and then tell us your awareness of what's happening between that connection and then that feeling of being disconnected from it yeah john so that that actually happens to myself too so a loved one will be very clear and they'll talk and then all of a sudden i can't hear them anymore and the same thing with with people who say i i felt my dad in the room and now i don't feel him what i've learned is the angels have explained that they have to go back and get energy that it takes so much energy to come visit you. Oh, wow. It, it requires a, like a ton of almost like kinetic energy to make that happen. To make, and imagine just to visit how much energy it takes. Imagine if you had to move a penny or move a feather, how much mm-hmm. energy more that takes. So they go back and forth as if to get energy. They'll leave for a second, get more energy, then then you'll feel them again. But that's why we feel the, oh my God, they're gone. I don't, I don't feel them right now. They're going back to get more energy. And then you'll know when they come back, you can, you can feel it or feel the same. You feel a shift when they come back. Mm -hmm. And this is something that happens. So when you, When we're experiencing it personally, is this something that happens like within moments or within days or within weeks, or does it just depend on the situation? It depends on the person visiting and how much energy. So it could be they're there for a day and then they're not. Mm. It could be a few moments and then they're not. But the, the reason they're there and they're not, and they're there and they're not, I've realized is the amount of energy it takes to visit. It takes a ton of energy to do that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What's their experience of that? Have you asked them about having to replenish? Like, what's that replenishment experience like? I wonder, I'm so curious. You know, I haven't asked that. Oh, <laughs> that's in such, that's, I want to ask it, Alaska right now. I'll see if I get anything on that. But I heard no time. So when oh. people go back and forth, they don't, they don't actually feel the time. Mm. They don't even feel the, the shift. We feel it. That's it. Only we feel it. They actually don't feel it. Okay. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. That's our perception of how it feels. But for, to them, it's, there was n- nothing is different. There's no time. But there has to be something for that connection to occur so that we can assimilate and translate somehow. Love. Love Love is the energy that bridges the two, the, you know, the other side. That's, that's the energy. Mm. Wow. Wow, That's so fascinating. Mm. What I also get as well, it's because this is reminding me to just this deep connection that I had to my grandmother as a guide that's i wasn't extremely close to my grandmother growing up she lived in one country i lived in another if i spent 20 hours with my grandmother in total in my lifetime it was probably a lot uh, at least consciously so it, it wasn't that type of relationship but then as i got older that her guidance it's like i could tell that she was there as a guide for me for a long time and i could feel her and other people who are reading for me, I think you've picked up on her a few, quite a few times also. And then she hadn't been showing up as much or barely at all. And I'm wondering if that's the shift of energy and the replenishment of getting back energy, or also sometimes just our guides shift, our loved ones kind of move out of the way for other information to come in. That's the latter for her. If she wasn't, if she was... So a guide, guides change. You know, there, there was a reason there was a shift because you needed another guide or you needed someone else's help, but she helped as much as she could. 
but that that would be why a spirit guide or someone acting as a guide would shift it's a little different than the the energy than the energy of the loved ones right yeah but they do go in and out guides that do the same thing we feel them go in and out mm -hmm. and can people just call a loved one in or have such a deep prayer or longing for that loved one to be there that they show up or how does that work for you 100 percent. but this is the trick time again there's no time so we may say the prayer and we don't get them right we don't we're like well they're not here nothing happened three days later you get a visit or you get a dream hmm. it's always always answered but it's it's our perception of time versus the other side's perception of time which they have no time hmm. So beautiful. I love your interpretations and your awareness of all of this. Um, before we get into calls also, I want to get a little bit into you. Again, you and I were discussing a little bit about how we were doing personally. It's like, okay, this been, <laughs> it's been some interesting um, energies or yeah. celebrations that are happening lately. And, and you mentioned how quickly things are are happening as we think of them and how they appear. And I'd love it if you share with the audience what your experience is personally and what you're seeing with your clients as well, because it will help make, it will help us to make sense of maybe some of the things that are nonsensical in our, in our human mind right now, especially, and then it's our, as our human bodies adjust to the shift of the speed of things as well, because I think a lot of us are experiencing that also. Yeah, I actually, I believe our perception of time right now has, is faster. Our, what, our, the way we feel time is actually feels faster. And also it seemed to be like, you think of someone then maybe a day later they call or a couple hours later, but, now it's like you think of them, they call. It's it's instant. It's almost as if our thoughts are being manifested instantly. It's even faster. Hmm. So that means we can manifest faster. We can think positive and create positive faster. We could think negative and think negative faster. So we have to really watch our consciousness, like where stay in gratitude. Stay in gratitude. That'll keep it high. How do you manifest, Debbie? How do you bring things in? I have to stay in gratitude. I, I notice that's 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 kind of why I said that. I I notice with myself that if I as long as I'm grateful for just being alive, you know, thank you for waking me up today, and just really stay there, things manifest quickly. However, if I stay in this emotional state of fear or sadness and just kind of hover in it, mm -hmm. it's almost as if everything stops. Everything mm -hmm. stops. And that, that's my experience. I noticed the heavier my emotion, the less things are manifesting. They just kind of freeze. Mm -hmm. And so again, getting into the gratitude and getting into a higher state, it's things start to move. When, what would you tell us, those of us who are going through the physical symptoms of some of these energies that are coming in that are facilitating some of this quickness of materialization that's happening also, because there are things happening with the body. I've been speaking to so many people who are having kind of very similar experiences, um, with our physicality lately. And I'm wondering what you and, and the angels perhaps have to, can share with us. Yeah, in 2018, I got a, like a channeled message from the angels saying that the human body is different now. And I'm mm. like, now, all of a sudden it's different. And that we had to trust our intuition more than ever with our health because Doctors won't know what to do with us. They don't know. It's, it's all different. Everything's different now. So they, the training's old, you know, prior to 2018, they're not going to know what to do after 2018 with the human body. So 
that means there's been shifts since then and it's 2021 now. So I can only imagine what our bodies are doing energetically, cellularly, that's different. So our intuition is our most powerful tool right now with our health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and our trusting which way to go instead of being directed by what's been proven to work for the masses, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's proven for you. It's really, it seems to be a very individuated um, intelligence. And sensitivity is, is more than ever. It's mm -hmm. as if we have, even people who weren't sensitive are sensitive now. So you're feeling things you never felt before. And the nervous system is, is super, you know, sensitive right now. Yeah. So that's a, that's a system that I personally nourish a lot because I know it's getting, it's getting kind of ramped up. I think most of us are, our, our nervous system is like, Woo, what's going on? You know, it's super sensitive. Yeah. Very vigilant also. So again, that sympathetic nervous system is really going through mm. recalibration as well. Yeah. And, yeah. And being aware of what causes that fight or flight response and why, and why, mm -hmm. and, and really shedding, um, the environmental conditioning that promoted those responses, because again, we're not the same as we were when we were taught that. No, no, it's, something's different. Even our, our, our perception of energy is different. It's almost like we're, we, we're becoming more telepathic and more sensitive. And we don't really, you know, uh, uh, people who are in this realm, we know about all that, but I'm talking like our neighbors who maybe not familiar with all this they're all of a sudden they're telepathic and more sensitive and they're like what's going on here so it's a whole new world for a lot of people it's a whole new world but even those of us who know it the speed at which things are happening and our capacity for those senses to expand in the way that they have it's yeah. really mind-blowing it's it's I, I still think we're trying to wrap our mind around the way that we're manifesting or the way that the telepathy is working, how things are just um, clicking at, mm -hmm. the, at, the, at the prompt of a thought. Yeah. Right? It's crazy. It's crazy mm -hmm. what's happening. Uh, but the empathy piece, it's, it's definitely taking a toll on our, on our nervous system. Because we're feeling not just ourselves, we're feeling not just ourselves, but we're feeling so much more of everything else. And for me, that's mm -hmm. it's it's beautiful and it's an adjustment, and it can be a challenge sometimes as our mind and our body adjust. But that also yeah. for me, it's I like calling it the princess, the princess and the pea syndrome, where if there's <laughs> something underneath the surface, no matter how many layers you try to put on it, you're still gonna feel it. And so it's really invoking this. Um, this journey and this um, really calling for the truth, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful and it can be very graceful and gentle, but it's, it's, it's the free, it invokes the freedom um, from all of these places where we've accommodated or, or adjusted ourselves or adjusted the truth for the sake of something that was led by something other than the truth, by fear, control, manipulation, whatever those denser energies were. I think we have to live, we're being forced spiritually to live more in our truth than we ever could, you know, before. We used to be able to kind of stuff things and kind of be okay. But mm -hmm. the moment we do in this, in this fast manifesting energy, our body starts to react to it. So it's almost like we have to stay in the truth to keep our body feeling better, you know, whatever the truth is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's if y'all are wondering why we're feeling what we're feeling, we're becoming <laughs> more empathic. We're feeling more not just of other people and the collective, but we're feeling more of ourselves. And yeah, really that's just a calling to, to truly be with it and be honest with mm. it and be in integrity with it. And that's what's is going to set everything free. 
So, yeah. so wonderful. Debbie, we have a lot of people with their hands raised. Can we dive okay. in? Okay. You ready? All I'm right. ready. Let's do it. All right, let's go to our first call and we'll put some more people. I'll, I'll promote some of y'all to, um, to panelists as well. But Emily, let's get started with you. Welcome to the call. Hello, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for being here. What's Emily! <laughs> Um, I was like meditating while you're talking, so I'm a little spacey. Um, but um, yeah, you, I just want, was hoping for some guidance in relationship to the project that you are probably aware that I've spoken about before. Um, it's just not moving forward and I'm getting super frustrated and I'm just, if there's any guidance um, to help me part the seas. <laughs> Um, or get something moving that would be really helpful while you're talking i heard in my brain october oh wow. it's just so loud in my head that's what i heard that's mm -hmm. your month to make all this happen mm, that feels like an eternity um should i keep looking at different um different architects because yeah. I've I've had I've had a few more meetings and they just aren't going well and um it shouldn't be this challenging. Yes, keep looking. Keep looking, I heard. There's okay. there's yeah, there's there's something better than what you have already. Keep looking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you can go and deeper to whoever reading with um oh go ahead. Please. Oh, I was just going to tell her, stay in the gratitude. The, Emily's like me, emotional. She's emotional like I am. I get really emotional. I get stuck in the feeling of mm. frustration or just stay in gratitude of what's gone right so far. Stay there. Mm. It'll help. It'll help speed it up. Okay. Great advice. Thank you. <laughs> That's wonderful. You got it, sweetie. All right, Emily, thanks for calling in and blessings to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Okay, let's move on. Let's go to Barbara. Let's get you to unmute, please. Hello. Hi, Barbara. How are you? Um, good. Just wondering, um, I lost my husband over a, a little over a year ago, and I'm wondering if he's around. I'm, I'm looking for signs and I get some. Mm. Have you gotten dimes or coin dimes? Um, not so much. I tend to get songs. He's showing me dimes. Oh, he's been around. He's, he's using coins. Okay. Keep an eye out, keep an eye out for dimes. He's around and he's also in the light. He's clear. All right. Is he like, um, oh, go ahead, Barbara, sorry. Oh, I was just going to ask um, if he feels I let him down in any way. He has no sadness. You need to know he's, he's like at peace. He's happy. He goes to see you and he goes to another. He's going back and forth to two places. Okay. You know, you know who he's. He's going back and forth and back and forth to two different homes a lot. Possibly my daughter. She gets a lot of signs and songs. And ask her if she got dimes. One of you guys is getting dimes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> he's definitely around and he's at peace. Wonderful. Wonderful. Did you have a question from him? Oh, I just wanted to know if, if, if I let him down in any way, we went through kind of a rough couple of years and I just wanted to make sure, you know, make sure that I did everything I could. He's gonna, he's answering it with something he sees now. He said he wished he had acknowledged that period he kind of just didn't talk about it there was a, a lot not spoken about and he wished 
his regret on his end was that he didn't speak about things. He didn't, he just pretended like it wasn't happening or everything was okay. And he has a regret with that. He also keeps showing the letter R. I don't know what R means, but he's shown me R, the letter R a couple times. Okay. No idea. The, no. oh, go ahead, John. I'll say it, it'll come afterwards. It typically does if it's, it's not relevant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. But Barbara, I would say with, with Debbie, with what Debbie's saying, it's if you're approaching trying to feel your husband and there's a feeling of guilt or shame or not knowing, um, look into the happy memories. Really like look into when you were having a good time, when you're laughing together, the birth of your mm. children whatever happens and allow that to lead the connection. And that will open up the portal through your dreams, through the signs and other ways. But again, if, if, if we sit in the resent, the guilt, the shame, the, mm -hmm. the second guessing, the doubt, it's, it blocks the energy from the clarity because I don't think in that realm, he knows anything else but love. And so anything else is going to be a distortion of that. And there were a lot of good times. Yeah, a lot of good times. <laughs> and what my youngest son had a really vivid dream about him a few days ago. And I mean, it really, it was a good dream, but it rocked, it rocked Matt because um, it was so real. Hmm. In the dream, was his dad happy? And yes. doing like happy. Okay, I'm chilled. So when we get a dream of a loved one and they're in a, like a happy place, that means they have peace. They've gone to the light, they have peace. It, it's a message that they have peace. So that, that's just confirming. He's got peace with you, with his son, with everything. He's in a good place. Wonderful, thank Barbara, you. thanks for calling in. Thanks so much. Thanks, Barbara. All right, let's move forward. I'll go to um, someone in the chat here in a little bit, uh, but let's see here. Let's go now to Cindy, welcome. Hi. Hello, welcome. Hi, Cindy. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. What's your question for Debbie? Um, I have two, if I can, if that timing works out. One would be is I'd love to um, hear any way that um, one who's passed away, my friend Wyatt, if um, his family needs anything from me. And um, the other thing would be is through this uh, weird time period without the vaccine, I have lost my, um, well, I haven't lost my sense of smell and taste, but I, everything to me tastes very bad. It tastes like a wet dog. Like I've lost 10 pounds, everything, it, everything smells weird and tastes weird from hairspray to food. So it's, it's, it's a good shift in not using your senses the way you're used to, but it's also, um, uh, there's, you know, is there anything I can do to aid to this learning process? Yeah, those are awesome questions. Why did Wyatt have facial hair or did one of his relatives have facial hair? I'm seeing facial hair. Uh, he went through a short time where he had a little goatee beard. He has this right now. And that's the, the time period I see. Or the, the, that's the face I see is the, is the goatee. Hmm. And I also, I also feel like he's, ta he's talking not about something they need physically, but emotionally. They need emotional, like phone calls, like love. I sense an emotional need. Yeah. Connection. Connection is what they need. Okay. And for some reason, he's going back to the goatee. He likes the way he looks, looks that way. He likes that look. <laughs> he kind of went into the wilderness uh, just before he passed away. He was uh, mm -hmm. just being a mountaineer. He so, likes yeah, the look. He, he, he died just after he got off the mountain and, you know, he was, he was a loved one and it was a sudden passing, but we had spoken enough. He'd overcome cancer and his son now has cancer or is fighting it right now currently. 
since he's passed. So I know that they have a lot. I didn't know for sure if it was um, appropriate for me to get involved because I had dated him. It'd, it'd be his ex-wife and ex-children. So I didn't emotionally get involved with that side of it. Um, but I'm, I, I mean, love is love. I don't care who it comes from, so. He's, yeah, he's saying the family needs emotional support. So that okay. they don't need anything physical. So in whatever way feels right to you, I understand that, that the awkwardness of it, but if there's something okay. that feels yeah. right. Okay, yeah, if there's something that feels right, around you know just expressing that you, you you know you you're there for them if they need anything yeah does he hang out with me he's laughing yes <laughs> i feel like he does but he's kind of uh, a prankster he's a prankster yeah. he's funny that's he funny likes, yeah he likes to um yeah he's a prankster about the taste and smell the the vagus nerve is that nerve that runs right over your kind of over your face your jaw and over your sternum and if that nerve is super tight it can cause smell and taste differences i would and that that nerve gets tight when we're stressed out so my first thought was that maybe you could work on the vagus nerve like stretch it you can look up stretches on youtube and stretch that nerve and see if anything starts to open up with the taste and smell. Mm. Because we're all, I mean, we, with COVID, we've all experienced a lot of trauma, especially with the, you know, the state of the world. And I'm sure everyone's vagus nerve is like super tight right now. So just probably benefit anyone. It's been a yeah. traumatic time for a lot of people. All right, hon, thank you so much for calling in. Thank you very much, John. It's been a pleasure. Mm. Okay. Oh, Suzanne wrote this for Barbara. Barbara, check this out. The Canadian dime has a selling yet on it, like the one that's up on your shelf. So maybe that has oh. something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Okay, cool. That's funny. So interesting. Interesting, Suzanne. Yeah. Thank you for that. And then we have a question that came in. Here we go from Amy. Um, so Amy writes, um, Debbie, please, my mother passed away last month after she rather abruptly stopped eating and drinking. The last words she said to me were, don't push when I tried to offer her a drink. Can you provide any information about the circumstances surrounding her decline in death? And is there anything more she and or the angels want me to know right now? Um, I've had several readings with Debbie before. She's amazing, but I'm not comfortable being live on this call tonight because I'm pretty distraught. Um, sorry, I'm Amy. Asking. Yeah. So sorry. Um, you're the the things that I feel with your mother. If you sometimes I can feel what happened prior to passing, or maybe a cause of death. And the the first thing that came to me was like Lou Garrett or mm -hmm. ALS. Um, and. I felt like her mind was super active and her body wasn't, which is very similar to Lou Garrett's. Angels say it had, it had progressed. She had a progression. It just sped up at the end. There, there, was, there was probably a year where it had been doing little things. So if you wanna look that up and maybe she had some of the symptoms similar. But the end was very quick, quick, accelerated. Um, and I keep hearing her say, I'm here, I'm here. She sees the color blue. If, she, if Amy has blue on, she can see blue or blue in the room. And she's with, she's with her. She's mm. with her all the time, I hear. So she's there as much as she can be. Wow, oh, beautiful. Okay, let's go into another caller now. Um, let's go to Monica. Welcome to the call. Let's get you to unmute, yes. Fabulous. Hello. Thank you so much for coming to me. This is really awesome. Thank you. I'm in Australia. Hi, Monica. Hi Debbie. I love your work. I love listening to you. Good morning. Oh, thank you. Oh. <laughs> All right. What I'm wanting to ask is, 
I've been told that I have connections to the angels and also that I have connections to animals and I'm wanting to open that channel. Is there any advice you can give me as to how I can go about that? So when you started talking, I felt your heart, like your heart is like loves it. Like there's a love for that in your heart already. That means there's a passion there already in your heart. Angels put that in your heart for a reason. Mm -hmm. Then I saw a horse. Oh, so yes. you have a connection with horses. I used to when I was younger, yes. I, I have chills. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because I had a feeling that one of my horses is my spirit guide now. <laughs> Is that true? I think so. Well, there's there. I keep seeing a horse while we're talking about all this. So. <laughs> and it's a white horse, is it? I can't see the color. I just see okay. that it's a horse. It's I right. see the shadow. Okay. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. Connect more. Connect yeah. more to your guides. Well, I connect with wallabies. I have wallabies that I feed every morning. And they Aww. always hang out in the garden. So I love them to death too. They are absolutely wonderful. And I have a feeling that they are teaching me something. I'm just not quite getting the message, I think. I but you are. Them, yeah. You are I'm... getting the message. Okay. You're, you're questioning it too much. Angels say you're getting it. Don't, right. don't, don't overthink it. Mm. All right. Wonderful. Thank you. Oh, Thanks, for <laughs> Thanks for calling. Me. It's wonderful Thank you. having that recognition and um, confirmation of those things that seem odd, but they're so true for us. It's something. It's it's one of the reasons why we do the show to normalize it to so that you can be okay saying, "Yeah, this is happening. It's not made up," and so you can dive further into it because there's so much love that wants to be shared. And one thing, Debbie, that I don't believe that most of us do enough is to really ask our angel, ask the guides, ask our spirit animals to, to help facilitate, to communicate. If we think we hear something to even be more clear so that we can understand it better. Um, and be open to the love that's, ready to be given if only we ask a hundred percent john that is probably the best thing we can do is acknowledge it and ask them to be clearer that that causes that bridge to you know start back and forth i love that that that's exactly what needs to happen okay and there's an opposite side of that also which i see a lot of people doing and and it happens in different situations. It's happened to me. But when we keep asking for the same confirmation over and over again, and it's like, and we keep receiving it, but then we doubt. But we receive something, but then we doubt. And then we have some mm. kind of connection, and then we doubt. Where's the balancing point in that, Debbie? It's, I don't believe that our guides or our spirit animals get tired of it, but it, it feels like at a particular time, at least from my experience, they just kind of let go and let me figure out that I can swim in that ocean um, without them being there because I already got it. Yeah, and, and but, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I think, I think it just depends on the person, you know, like the more you trust yourself, the more you'll trust it. Mm -hmm. The more the more you trust yourself, the more you trust it. So if you're going back and forth a lot, maybe trust yourself more. Uh, great answer. How simple, right? <laughs> How simple. Oh, I love that. Um, all right, we're going to take more calls. But Debbie, let's get into the special offer because people are going to start clicking through when they scheduled our sessions. I, I bought mine before the show. I haven't scheduled ah. it yet. <laughs> okay. Everybody, awesome. thank you, John. Every special offer. The link is in the chat box. So if you click in the chat box, you'll see April just typed in the long link that has Beyond the Ordinary Show on it. If you can't find it in the chat box, just open up a new browser or click on the little plus sign in your Google or Safari, wherever you are, and type in Beyond the Ordinary Show.com forward slash Debbie 25. D-E-B-B-I-E 25. It'll take you to that same page. 
All right, Debbie, what's everyone going to receive in this offer as they participate? Yes, the reading, 45 minutes reading and healing. 45 minute reading and channel, whatever, whatever the angels think you need is, is kind of what happens in the 45 minutes. But first of all, this offer is exclusive. It's none of these MP3s are available anywhere else um, except uh, from BTO. Uh, so yeah. yeah, yeah, they're they're not even on the web my website. They're, you can only get these MP3s and this offer through John's show. And um, you get the 45 minute reading with a guided walking meditation. I like this one for those of you who have a hard time meditating. You know, this is like, put your headphones on and you get talked through a meditation. And you can meditate in different ways. This is a, a way for people to meditate if you have a more difficult time meditating. It's kind of fun too. It, or a different, yeah. <laughs> or just something different to shake it up, you know? Um, well, I love this also because, again, as, as we're embodying so much energy, this walking meditation and doing it while you move and having the energy that you stream for from the transmission when you're talking and you're, you're really sharing that energy from that vibrational place, I think it's lovely to be in in relation with that as we're absorbing, assimilating our bodies, adjusting as well. So I think this is, you say something here, it's great for beginners, but it's, I would say it's great for everything that we're going through physically right now. Ah, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree, John. I, I didn't even think about that, but you're I right. Feel that so strongly. Okay, that's great. Um, yeah, that would be perfect for that. And it's outside, so walking, meditation, grounding. Um, the next one is a 777 hertz. So I use uh, music frequencies because I think sound heals faster than anything. And this one, the 77 hertz frequency is the angelic realm frequency. So it basically just listening to it. Mm. Your consciousness is in the angel realm. Angels see the big picture. You'll start to see a big picture about something or something you need to see that you're not seeing. So the music just opens you up to the higher, bigger picture. It helps you think like an angel. Hmm. I love it. And then the last one is an MP3. It's just, it's an electronica song that I wrote that is just to make you happy it's it's about what john and i believe in and talk about it's about shining your light every single one of us is a light and we're here to shine we're not here to like shrink we're here to shine it and it's just a, it's just the song made me happy to give to everybody so i wanted to include okay. it and your song and the way that you tone through it and the energy that you bring, it's just, it's, it's amazing. Um, <laughs> Thanks, so. you know, The transmissions, the energy of Debbie, 45 minute reading and healing and whatever shows up for you. Um, I love my sessions of Debbie. I can't say it. Next. <laughs> you guys take advantage of it again. Again, it's there as part of a BTO offer for our BTO community. And it's $137, two payment mm -hmm. option. And you can book in sooner rather than later if you purchase now. Uh, the code again, um, Joanne, it's right above where it says Debbie's offer. So if you look at a time step at 2.42 p.m. or whatever 42 p.m. it is your time on the chat box, that's where you'll find it. And April will type it in again, if you don't mind, April, um, so you can find it in easier. And that'll take you again to that. Um, special offer page and just click on purchase now super easy checkout and you'll get your link so that you can go ahead and schedule your session so take advantage of it and debbie again thank you for your generosity with that as always um and with my that, pleasure john my pleasure oh you're so awesome let's go to some more callers okay so let's go to linda hello welcome to the show hi Thank you for calling on me. Um, Hi, Linda. 
Hi, Debbie. Wonderful to see you. And thank you for all that you're doing. <laughs> um, my question is, is I I have a lot of times um, other people's angels come to me like that I need to call them or I need to contact them or, or do something for them. But I have a difficult time with my own. Um, and I'm just wondering, um, I'm, I know I have a guardian angel, um, Sophia, and my grandmother, but I'm having a tough time hearing what they're saying for me. And I'm just wondering if anything comes through for you, with you. Well, well, I heard, welcome to the world of a healer. <laughs> Healers are so good at helping everyone else. And then when it comes to yourself, it's like, yeah. So I, I really identify with that. And I want to say, you have to get even more quiet for yourself. So I see 10 different guides. You have 10 different guides of all, like they're all there. They're all helping. You got a lot of help. Archangels and humans, not just, you know, angels are not just, they're, they're both sides. Loved ones, you've got a little 10 person group. But the angels are telling me to quiet the mind. That means meditation and whatever way that meditation is for you. Do you sing? Um, I don't. Like, I just, if a song, you know, I'm not a singer, but if a song comes in that makes me happy, I like to sing it. They're telling me sound of your own voice. So you could even ohm would quiet your mind enough. Mm. Like the sound of your voice would quiet your your mind, making sound like long ohm or ah would give you enough quiet in the mind to hear your guides more. Okay, great. Oh, I will give that a try. Thank you so much. Yeah, but they're there. They're trying. They're they're trying to get through. And I keep hearing write. You're supposed to write. You know mm. that? Like automatic write? Or, well, they're just they're just saying right. What whatever makes sense to you. Okay, I can do that too. All right, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any one specific one that comes out really strong? Well, Archangel Michael is one of your big ones. So Archangel Michael is really protecting you. You've been protected. Oh, that's wonderful to hear. Mm -hmm. okay. Marilyn, thank you in. so much. Tune in and ask him to work for you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, let's continue now. How about we go to Emily Wen? Emily, welcome. Hi, thank you. Hi, Emily. Hi, Debbie. How are you? So good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for calling on me, John. Um, Debbie, I had a reading with you about a month ago. Um, so I, my question is just kind of touching base on that. Um, I recently filed for divorce and I just want to know from my, um, my angels and my spirit guides or my guardian angel, um, if I made the right decision, I think I did, but it's, you know, it's a tough thing to go through. So I just want confirmation that uh, I, I did the right thing. I'm on the right path. And if my, um, if my angel Ted can just let me know that he's with me so i heard the angels just told me you wouldn't have done it you wouldn't have done it if it wasn't right you wouldn't have done it you wouldn't have done the papers you wouldn't yeah. have just you wouldn't they're telling me you wouldn't have done it so if you did it i did, did it what's right for, <laughs> yeah that's what's right for you and, and any fear that comes off after that clarity any kind of fear or questioning it, that's just fear. But the moment okay. you actually did it was the clarity from the angel. Okay. Do I, and do I, is my angel Ted with me? Do, is he with me? I feel him all the time, or I, I hope I feel him all the time, but. <laughs> yeah, but wh why would he be on the outside of the house? He's like around, he's like kind of watching over the ground of where you are. He keeps, he keeps watching the outside for some reason huh um, maybe because my my 
future ex-husband has not moved out yet? He's watching like the perimeter of the house. Yeah, he's he's definitely he's, like, guarding the house. Okay, maybe, be, yeah, maybe because my family and everybody is kind of worried about um, some volatility that may be involved with, you know, when, when my just, husband moves out or if I move out or whatever. I have chills. He's watching the house, like the out, he's, watch, he's okay. watching the house. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And can, can you ask him what his, I, I think I know of his signs that he shows me when he's around, but could you have him just clarify for me a little bit? Well, he just showed the color red. So does red mean anything about anything you've seen? He just showed like something red. It's a sign. Oh, his, his Corvette that, that you and I spoke about. Do you remember he, I, I asked him, I've been asking him for 25 years since he passed to get the, um, to give me his Corvette so I could find it. And his Corvette was kind of a- It's red. Like a, a yeah, a mahogany, like burnt red color, yes. Well, you're going to get a sign. You're going to get a red sign. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> red. Okay. Um, and I red. see the number, I see the time 911 all the time. So I'm, I assume that that is him because he used to be a Marine and a Sheriff's officer. So I'm assuming that that is his sign also. I don't. I... That's Angel. You know, 911 oh, okay. means completion. You have completed a phase. Oh, you're okay. in completion. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for yeah. calling in. Thank, Thank you, Emily. Yeah, and Thanks. blessings to you and luck with everything that you're doing. Thank yeah. you, you too. Yeah. Blessings to you guys Bye, too. Emily. Thank you for the work that you Bye. do. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, Emily. Um, it, and now I want to really bring up the fact also about how much we're being empowered with this information while guides and the angels are showing up. There's a there's a working with them as opposed to them working to us or working for us. There's mm. there's a collaboration and a knowing. So was, even as Emily was coming in, there is a, and I, Emily, I know you're trying to squeeze in a lot in a short amount of time because you knew eventually I was going to cut you off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so I get that, but it's also, it's also being just dropping into your knowing and breathing into like, knowing that there's layers of us that will make a decision or we're in a place where we know we have to make a decision soon and be led one way or another. And so there's, there's, there's the ego, the human self that doesn't want to screw it up and wants to get it just right. And doesn't want to hurt someone or, or get hurt, all these other things. And mm. there's the soul experience also. And so the soul is wanting to experience certain polarities for the human experience. So to evolve as spirit. And then there's the part of the spirit that part of us that just knows. And so we go through the layers and into the part of that part of us that knows and yeah, have the angels and the guides help us to confirm and just kind of chuckle when we see red or when we see <laughs> or feel this thing. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> thank you for that confirmation and 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 have fun with the intimacy of that relationship of that direct connection to spirit and how it's facilitated. Then the self doubt will start dwindling away, and and I think it's really important right now more than ever because our thoughts and our actions, minute by minute, not day by day, actually second by second are creating our future in the moment now yeah. manifesting so quickly. So as we align with the truth and the comfort and the knowing of that connection of, of why we made that decision, knowing that if you made it from a place of love, even if it's creating boundaries or standards or separation, but if love led the way, there's no way you can get it wrong. There's no way you can get it wrong. So we can sit in that. And that awareness and just like, okay, I wonder what the next adventure is going to be because that's what's happening. That's what's happening. And, and wait with um, great anticipation and curiosity and wonder as to what's going to evolve in love for you as that next thing. But it's scary because we're used to the comfort. We're used to things being a certain way. We, we don't mm -hmm. want to screw things up. And, and our bodies are adjusting to that uncertainty and comfort or discomfort as well. So it's, we're all going through a journey, but again, just connect Emily. 
everybody on this call connect to your knowing you just know and you don't have to rationalize it you don't have to have the words for it to explain to someone else it's just for you to know and nobody else period doesn't worry your mom dad thinks your ex your kids you just know and that's you have to follow that truth no matter what no matter what so emily thank you Thank you. All right, Debbie, let's go into another caller. And thank you for letting me All play right. with you. I love it when we get to do this. Um, I love it. Olha, let's go to you. Welcome. Hello, John. Hello, David. Hi. 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 Uh, my brother passed away two years ago. And I was just uh, always somehow connected to death before they would like to talk to me, strangely through the dreams or just as a thought was coming um, on cemetery, I could suddenly stop and uh, pray over someone because I had feeling. But my f brother passed away two years ago and I never see him. I just wonder, and I'm going to see his children in a month. I would like to know if I have anything for them to say because his older uh, son is getting married. This is why I'm going to Ukraine for a wedding. And his daughter keeps asking me if I hear anything from my brother. And I really don't know anything. Mm. Did your brother like to wear a hat, Olga? Hmm. I keep seeing a hat, like someone with a hat on. Or would someone else in heaven with him wear a hat all the time? Mm. Well, yeah, he, he probably liked to, to wear a cap rather than real hats yes he, he yeah, that was kind of his normal thing to wear a hat you, you know unfortunately i live in united states and he live in ukraine we didn't see each other and um, that often for me to to make sure Got but it. yes he liked a uh, cap more than a hat. at least i saw him in the summer usually <laughs> and he okay. was my, uh, he was my only sibling and he was younger and now he's gone and I could feel or see the other people and never him. And this is very strange. So I also, um, I pick up that he, he's a little stuck between worlds. Mm -hmm. That's probably why you're not feeling him. So this is another reason you might not feel someone all the way is when they're stuck. So I'm gonna ask the angels to take him all the way to the light. Um, one of the things you might have had experience in the house, have you had any water issues like the plumbing or toilets backing up, water leaking? Has anything like that been happening in the house? Mm, not uh, not uh, the house I live for, no. What about anybody back home that's with him? Have they had any, have they mentioned anything? Unfortunately, I don't know. Okay, so the angels are going to take him up to the light. Sometimes that's all they can do is communicate through water because um, they affect the pressure of the water. But when they're in the light. Mm -hmm. I, I just a uh, few weeks after, not even weeks, like really maybe two weeks after he passed away, I saw very little yellow butterfly completely out of blue and it was not even time for it. And he was so tiny and he came and sit on my uh, book and I asked him, are you my brother? I was basically asking him because, <laughs> and then a week later I was washing car and the same little butterfly suddenly came. I was completely sure I started almost crying. I even took picture of him on my sitting on my car, but it was only time and it's two years past. So um, I'm sure he was around, but he wasn't totally able to communicate as clear as everyone else who's visited you. So this will make it even clearer. He's been around. I saw the hat, but I also saw he couldn't really communicate the way he wanted to. So the angels are going to take him to the light. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. And thank give you. him peace. Yeah. Oh, feel that, Oha. Yeah. You'll get a dream, you'll get a visit, you'll get what you're used to getting now. 
sometimes that's why we don't get a visit at all or we can't dream about them is they're stuck. They can be stuck. Thank you, Beth. Yeah. Blessings. And again, you even like feeling him right now and welling up, that's that's you bringing him in now and honoring that memory. So yeah. yeah. I, I just feel strange because I'm only uh, sight of his family and I'm going to see his children, three children. and. I know they will keep asking me, like I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have something to share. You'll have something to share by then. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Olha. Thank you. Yeah, and blessings too. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay, let's go to another caller. Let's go to Jessica Kettner. Jessica, welcome. Hi. Hi, Hi, Jessica. thank you, John, for picking me. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Debbie. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to ask, I, um, I've recently kind of come into, well, more just put all my kind of gifts together for healing, and it has to do with singing. Um, and so I've, I feel like I do work with the angels for uh, singing, um, working with like frequency harmonizing and aligning. And I wanted to ask, though, is there anything that I can do to kind of bring it more clearly in so that I am a little bit more, um, I guess, channeling would be the best word, but is there anything that I can do with my team that would help yeah. bring in? Okay. <laughs> Your crown chakra is, so there's the, there's the crown chakra, then there's the soul star, which is the chakra right above the crown. Those two are not quite open yet. Okay. The way to open them is through sound. Mm -hmm. So do it later. It's really it's something you definitely don't want to do on, it, it'll be loud, but as okay. high as you can, Okay. as long as you can. Okay. It just, <laughs> I could do that. Yeah. It's gonna open it up. I just see once you do that sound, it'll just it'll just it's it's gonna clear what you want it to clear. Okay. All right. The sound so, E. I keep getting that I need to sing a little higher lately. So that was yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. You're a high E. <laughs> you're a really high one. Yes. It'll knock it out. Okay. All right. Okay, oh, yes, the perfect person. Debbie and her singing amazing. <laughs> Jessica, thank you so much for calling. Yeah, in. thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Blessings. Thank you, Jessica. All right, let's move here to um. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, here is oh, there's two questions I want to get into. Okay, um, let's go to Mary's question first that came in. Um, my mom, who's 89 and in a nursing home, is in her final stages of life here. She fears judgment on the other side. And we have many conversations around this. She has lost her ability to speak, but understands our conversations. Is there anything I can do to help her or advice from the angels? So the angels are telling me, it's funny, I'm getting music on her, that music would help her too. It's, 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 something, it's something that would heal her, like sound healing. Sound mm. healing would help heal her. She's got a lot of anxiety. She's mm. got a lot of anxiety. So something for anxiety, sound healing for anxiety. But I also feel um, more hugs, more touch, more love. Mm. More holding, maybe hold the hand, hold her hand, contact more would bridge the communication gap would help hmm. it's it's almost like like a it reminds me of holding a baby the baby calms down when you hold the baby it's as if there's a lot of anxiety in the body and that would help the communication oh that's beautiful yeah and you said sound healing like what type of sound healing like would listening to your seven seven hertz music help is it more like a sound bowl type of healing um it's I, I would look up yeah frequencies for anxiety frequencies to uh, soothe anxiety okay 
perfect. Uh, thank you, yeah. Debbie. And Mary, thank yeah. you for writing that in. Thank you, Mary. Uh, and let me get to the next question that I was going to get into, and I'll get some into the, the video calls here as well. And again, y'all remember the special offer with Debbie is, includes the reading, includes the the sound activations, the transmission, the walking meditation. Um, again, the special offer link is in the chat box. April just put it in there again uh, to make it accessible to you guys. And it's $137, 45 minutes for the reading and healing. Um, and again, these other transmissions that come through music and song and frequency through Debbie, which is just fantastic. Um, so you all take advantage of that. And this question comes in from Kim. So Kim's asking, um, well, she's saying, my love passed away June of 2020 from leukemia. Mm -hmm. I feel him with me frequently and wondering if this is real. And I also wonder whether I have a bigger role energetically in what is happening in this world right now, or if I'm already doing it. And is this enough? So two different questions there. Did you get both of those? Yeah, I did. I, I sh Angels say... She knows he's around, like, like not to question it. She knows it. when she thinks he's there, he's there. And yet he's doing the in and out. Mm. So she's probably oh, feeling wow. him there and not feeling him there, feeling him there. He's doing that in and out, you know, getting energy coming back. Um, Angel say, is she doing the question? Is she doing everything in the world that she's supposed to be doing? Or there's more. I heard she's doing some of it, but she also knows there's another layer. There's mm. more. Interesting. And she kind of knows. knows. Her, yeah. <laughs> she knows. Oh, I love it. <laughs> uh, you may want to schedule a reading. I don't know. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go to a live caller now. Um, where did you go on I me? Mean, I want, to, well, I'm going to call on you next anyway, because you're just speaking so loudly to me, but I just went to Alex. You're speaking, your energy is really big. So I'm being guided to call on you. Hi. Uh, hi. Thank you so much. Um, I just, I, I love your show and um, just, yeah, just loving what you're sharing, Debbie, with everyone. And mm. I think I sort of resonated with, um, yeah, one of the other callers. Um, I think it was Linda and she was talking about like how she can help others so I was thinking like oh yeah this is such a reminder to ask ask and receive guidance and um so what's coming up for me is um um like one of the most important male figures in my life he passed away two years ago and he was my partner twice and my best friend and I feel like he was always my support and also guided me and um and just with what's been happening this year, um, my yoga studio has been closed down for over a year. And I'm just feeling, I'm getting a lot of messages that it's time to just work more with my intuitive work. So I'd love, and I'm getting messages from him as well sometimes, but I'd love to hear what you have to say around that and anything, any guidance would be welcome. He wants to speak through you. He's trying to like talk through you. So it's, it's almost like he's trying to help people through you or wants to help people through you. Uh, like he was a channel also, or was able to do that work. So mm. he's definitely can help you with that. Um, I, I also smell cigarettes while we're talking. So did he smoke at some point? Long, long time ago, he would have smoked <laughs> the pipe, but he also loved incense. And I actually, um, his family gave me like all the incense, some of which we collected over the years. And so I do have that. So that's interesting, smoke or that, yeah. It, it smells like cigarettes more than incense. Mm. So I'm wondering if it's like a younger version. He could be bringing his younger version in here. Okay, yeah, maybe cigar. I don't, I didn't know him. Maybe he did smoke cigarettes, possible. He's definitely around, definitely wants to talk through you. He's also kind of giving you that feeling to, to, you, to do intuitive work. You can use him like a guide. Yeah, with him. yeah, I feel like yeah. the, his name's Michael and I feel like he does connect me to Archangel Michael. Yep. He reminds me of that. Beautiful. 
Alex, is there a hesitation that you want to ask Debbie about? Or there's something that's coming up in the field around like a holding back or pulling back or? Yeah, definitely. I, I feel like I've sort of definitely, <laughs> you called me on it. I'd say definitely I've been in the closet, in the closet spiritually and I sort of hide ah. my you know, like uh, design and yoga. And I know that this is probably the nudge I'm, I'm getting right now to just, just to trust and listen. So I don't know any, anything you can do to help me to have that confidence and be fearless. Don, that was awesome. <laughs> um, remember uh, what I, what I, we talked about you know, living your truth, you have to live your truth now, or your health starts to suffer. So if you're feeling like you're not having enough energy, I'm going to tell you, if you do this, you'll have the energy. Mm, yes, that makes like, sense. Yeah. yeah. Like, let, let, like repressing something could actually take your energy right now. Yeah. I feel um, like that's what I do. Like I do, I do show up and help, but it's not always in the truthful aligned way that I would like. And so that does wear on me and, and then I feel exhausted and stuff. Yeah. So it takes energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Versus yeah. being up flowing, right? And that's true for all of us on this call. For all mm -hmm. of us, the the more that we're not living in our truth, the more that we're going to feel it physically and mentally. Yep. And not in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. And not in a good way. So that knowing it's, and that's, that's really choosing ourselves and not abandoning ourselves also. We're always afraid other people are going to abandon us, leave us, all that, but we're really shown where it originates from. Yeah. And so as you live your truth, then you're not. And Debbie, can I answer one of the questions just from experience? Yes, please. Yes. And, and I know you have this experience as well, but I started the show almost 10 years ago. And the people that I was interviewing from the very first show were huge in a personal development area. It's, it's, it's like, I'd call them to invite them. Like, we don't know why, but we're saying yes. It's like, well, thank you. And I just had to show up and like other people are doing telesummits and doing interviews and they're freaking amazing. Why should I be doing this? They're eloquent. They have a great conversation. They have amazing guests. Why am I coming in? But I was guided to, and I had to give myself permission to suck. Mm -hmm. Even sharing, even sharing information and I'd play intuitive mm -hmm. games with myself just to play the games with the guides and whatever I was getting in. But I had to give, I had to practice. Mm. But I was a hell of a lot better than I thought that I was. Awesome. I was a hell of a lot better than I thought that I was. <laughs> and I discovered that afterwards, but then it just kept refining and refining and refining. But had I shut that down, oh my God, the friendships and community and connection and sense of mm -hmm. purpose and different places I've gotten to travel around the world and the experiences, they would have eluded me all because of a fear of sucking. <laughs> that... Fear to suck. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to do it badly. Um, I'd say, Thank you, John. yeah, wow. I'd say be more afraid of holding back what's in you. And, and, I, and I say that selfishly because we need your love. We need your energy in this mm -hmm. world now more than ever. And so do it for yourself, but do it for us as well. Do it for the people that you love as well. We've been waiting for you and, and we need, really, we need all of us, truly. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So thank, you. Yes. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That was beautiful. Thank you, Debbie. Oh my god. Oh goodness. my gosh, that was awesome. Mm. Well, with you, it's always fun. I get to share in this way. This kind of <laughs> I love it. So good. All right, let's go. I have to go to victory because that's where we're heading next. Oh, victory. Okay. Okay. <laughs> victory. Welcome to this call. There okay. you are. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, 
first time joining one of your calls. So, wow. Um, so I have, I'm kind of like Linda in the sense that I, um, I don't know, I just feel all of these energies around me. I smell these certain smells just out of the blue vibrations start going off. I feel like I'm um, something or someone is trying to connect with me. I just can't receive their messages. I can't tap in for some reason to receive whatever messages they're trying to give me. So I'm um, just wondering if you had any guidance on um, how I could tap in better to get their messages or any messages come through to you for me. Hi, Victory. Hi. First, first thing that comes to my mind is you're hearing a lot. Like I, I feel like I heard the word medium. You're more like a medium. And clear out what's not of the light. So the angels are really good at doing that. Get rid of the riffraff. You're hearing everything. Angels, get rid of anyone here that's not in the light. Take them all to the light and get them out of here. And then see who's left. That will help. That's Thank all you need to do. Get the riffraff out of there. Then you'll be like, you'll, you'll have the one that needs to talk to you still there. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're <laughs> welcome. <laughs> and that's the thing, Debbie. I mean, it's how did you step into just sharing and putting it out there and, and being in touch with your mediumship and your psychic awareness? Because that's it's again, it can be so challenging and we judge ourselves. And again, we want to be right, but. Oh my gosh. I, it's, it, I still judge myself. I still, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. still challenge. It's still challenging, you know, um, it, extremely challenging for me to come out of the closet because of the way I was raised. I was raised very Southern Baptist. So you know, it was a big deal to kind of just do this, but I, I think it, I think it, it's still, a, you know, you just have to, I just have to push through it all the time. Just be myself. Same, same as everyone else. Just be yourself, be your truth. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And it's with me with the show, it's like, I can, I can have a sucky show now and a lot worse than I did when I first started. It's just depends. <laughs> And sometimes it's just like, where did that stuff come from? And you're just, you don't even yeah. know where you're bringing things in from. It's like, wow, that wasn't me. That was something else. But mm. it's just showing up in the moment and just, like you said earlier, trust in yourself. It's like the more that you trust yourself, the more we can even say something that sounds wrong. I'm sure you have this experience and then someone will, you know, in a reading and then someone will reach out later and go, oh my God, that's exactly what I needed to hear. How'd you know? <laughs> like, oh my God, I thought I gave you wrong information or something wasn't right. I can't believe that came in, but somehow it lines up. Does that happen to you? Yeah. Cause I honestly, I'll hear things and I'm like, I don't, I don't know why I'll, I'll just, that's what happened. And it retrospect, it'll make sense. Like a week later, sometimes I'll get a, e a lot of emails that it made sense later. Yeah. yeah. So we get to get out of our own ways and allow it to come through. Yeah. And allow ourselves to be human in it as well. I, I love the way you do your readings and the way that you do it. <laughs> um, all right, let's continue. Let's go to Tracy. Let's go to you now. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Hi, John. Hi, Ooh. Debbie. Hi, Tracy. Um, I, went, I wanted to find out my dad passed away a year ago from COVID. And I just want to know if there was any messages he had for me or any angels or archangels. Sorry about your dad. Now here's smoke again. Cigars. This time I smell cigar. I, I'm smelling. I, I can smell like in the third eye a cigar. Did your dad ever smoke cigars or someone no. in heaven? What about someone in heaven with him? Maybe there's somebody with him that he's, you know, he was a musician. Oh, okay. <laughs> I smell cigars. Um, I also feel like tingly. So I don't know if you ever get that sensation where you actually feel tingles or chills. That's also a sensation I get with him. So I'll feel what you might feel when, when he's around. So I feel like you actually feel him in your skin that he's around. Has that happened? 
that has. Yeah, that's, that's, so it's more sensory. He's more sensory, like, or the way you feel is more sensory. So that's him. Awesome. Yeah, it, it, it's him coming into your eight foot energy field. Now there is someone smoking a cigar either with him or around him if he didn't. So he might smell that too. Okay, he's I haven't had that Yeah. Okay, he's not alone. <laughs> <laughs> he Tracy can ask with... a... Oh, go ahead. Tracy can ask a question for you. Yes. Is there a message for Tracy? He said he's with friends. Oh, he does have a couple friends that have passed away. This was a couple of years before some of his good buddies had died. He's, right, but he's this was like maybe friend. a year before it, he died. Yeah. Oh, good. He's with his friend. Yeah. And he also has a birthday gift. He knows it's someone's birthday. He's holding a birthday present. Hmm. Like it's a part, it's going to be a party or there's a party coming birthday hmm, not sure interesting all right someone's birthday is coming my mom's birthday is in october yeah he knows there's a birthday coming he's i think he's just birthday. letting you know yeah he's letting you know i know her birthday's coming he's oh, that's wonderful he's... yeah thank you thank you so much you're welcome. Yeah, my heart, my heart lit up whenever I heard that he was with friends. I could feel you, Tracy, somehow, or maybe I was just feeling his energy, but I can feel something. Ah, like, <laughs> uh, it was really yeah, sweet. Yeah, Robert, awesome. I'm thinking of all the people, his buddies. So sweet. His buddies. He grew up that he grew up with from high school, mm -hmm. but he's wow. kept up with them all the years. Amazing. It's awesome. Amazing. All right. <laughs> Thank you for calling in. Thank you so much. Great Thank to see you. you. Thank you. All right, y'all, let's go to another caller here. And again, before we go into the call, April will put the link for the special offer in the chat box one more time so you can find it really easily. Book your session, get the transmissions, the, the hearts, the walking meditation. Um, what was the other? The other? Um, the angelic consciousness, the yes. one that, that raises the consciousness to the vibration of the angel realm. So you think bigger. Okay, nice. <laughs> Ooh, I can't wait to listen to that one. I'm, I'm listening to that one, one tonight, actually. That's so cool. So again, the link's in the chat box and you can get to it again by going to beyondtheordinaryshow.com forward slash Debbie 25. And of course, we're going to run the replay. We'll send the replay link out later. And remember, it's the last show for season 25 of Beyond the Ordinary. So we'll run replays. We'll have the offers available a little bit longer. And of course, Debbie's is always on replays. Um, and then we'll come back to you guys live in September, um, in mid September, but again, we're finishing out in the grand finale. So let's continue a few more callers here. Um, Marty, let's go with you. If you unmute please and welcome. Yes. Hi, thank you. I'm a first time caller. Oh, awesome. <laughs> welcome to the call. <laughs> but I've been listening a lot. Um, oh, it's, it's hard to narrow it down a little. I'm a hospice nurse. I've been doing that for a lot of years. I'm kind of retirement age, but not retiring. I still love my work, but it is going crazy with people quitting and getting sick and all that. So it sometimes feels like it's draining my energy, but mostly it fills me. But then also my 96 year old mother moved. I've lived across the country from her for since high school. And I moved her to a board and care near me a, about a month ago. And she's been very judgmental and, you know, anti new age and all that sort of thing. But it feels like we're just ready to move on with that and just be love for each other. But I guess I'm just looking for any advice on my hospice work or my work with my mom, if the angels have any input for me. Yeah, uh, the Gabriel, Archangel Gabriel is one of your guides. And usually he works with people who have to say, you know, he gives you things to tell people. He'll also help you with your mother. Like, how do I say this? Gabriel, give me the words. How do I say this to my mom? And see what happens, see what comes out. But when Gabriel's working with someone, you are, you are kind of doing the kind of work I do you know you have a message to deliver so 
I'm sure it's happening in your work. And also he's trying to help you with your mom. Great. Oh. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like nice. if you don't know what to say, how, you know, Gabriel, ask Gabriel how to say it. I, I asked Gabriel what to say on the, you know, help me with the show, help give me the words. Okay, great. I've been using my yeah. angel cards and my archangel cards and all those things. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very helpful. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, okay. you'll know what to say. You'll know what to say to people. Uh, and Marty, thank you for the work that you're doing and helping so many in the way that you do. Yeah. Um, it really hits. I think you're a walking angel for us in the work and for any of us who've had people in life's transition that receive the type of assistance that you provide it's we can feel how sacred it is thank you chills chills yeah and it's interesting it's kind of a combination of you're with so many different types of people you can't really be you know the weird you know channeler type which i and i really don't have those kind of gifts per se so I just am sort of normal, but present and loving and non-judgmental all at the same time. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Oh, Debbie has something to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to say, there's no accident you're there in that environment. The angels put you there, brought you there. And your energy of who you are actually is the perfect energy for souls in that place. If they had a lot of chaos, it would be hard on them. It's good to have your real, like your, your energy is very calm. They need that. They need that to help transition. So just your energy is good. Mm. Thank you. I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It helps. It helps them. Yeah, what a gift. What a gift. And Mary, Marty, excuse me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. All right, y'all. I can't believe we're an hour and a half already, Debbie. I was me either. Longer. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. Um, and in honor of your your time and energy, also, is just uh, I'm gonna thank you for coming on the show, everybody. Again, the link for the special offer and to go get your session with Debbie and to receive those transmissions and the recordings. It's, you know, where to find it. We'll run the replay. And as always, oh my God, thank you. Thank you for what you do and the way that you show up. And it's just, it's always so much fun to play with you. Thank you, John. Thank you, everyone. I love this call. Thank you, mm -hmm. guys. Yeah. And y'all just, again, just open those hearts, open to your knowing and just live in your truth, live in your sovereign truth carry that forward and then everything else will align to that i know it will and so it's with that blessing that i send all of y'all a huge hug and look forward to seeing you next season have the amazing rest of your summer and thank you so much for being part of this just beautiful amazing community that y'all created um and have allowed us to transmit to have a fantastic evening great summer i'll talk to you soon